This is Jerry Fry, audio historian of Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters. The following is the professional history of a PPV member told by herself in her own fashion on this June the 8th of 2009. These interviews are being recorded in order to compile firsthand a living history of the members of our organization and stories of their professional experiences. Many of our members began in what is called the golden age of radio and television. And this is an attempt to preserve as much data as possible for succeeding generations. This recording is not intended for broadcast without first obtaining permission from Pacific Pioneer broadcasters. And with me today in Hollywood, or actually in Burbank, is Ruth Ashton Taylor, probably uh, best known for her wonderful and many years work on Channel 2 Television News here in Los Angeles. Ruth, nice to have you with us. Thank you very much for thinking of me. Well, I wanted to find out as much as po about you as possible for this uh, audio history. So we usually start at the beginning. Tell us where you were born and uh, what kind of a background you had as a youth growing up. Goodness sakes, uh, that does mean we have to go back a little ways. Back a little ways. <laughs> Well, I was born in Long Beach, California. Oh, you're a native I'm a native Southern California. California. In fact, through the years, I used to say I was born in California, and I had hope to live, work, and die in California. <laughs> I didn't stay in New York for a while, but I always aimed for California and got back to California. But uh, I was born in Long Beach. Uh, my uh, father was Spanish, and he was head of the Spanish uh, section of the Bank of Italy, I think it was then. It oh, really? America. A Spaniard uh, running the Bank of Italy? It's, well, it's, it, it, there wasn't a lot of, I don't know, what, I hmm. was very young at the time, like just born, because yeah. my mother and father, my mother was a very a red-haired uh, English woman, and hmm. a Spanish man and an English woman are totally... Uh, should never even get near each other because he is used to being in charge and she's in, used to being in uh -huh. charge. Two high-minded individuals. Two high-minded individuals, and it didn't work out. So uh, my mother and father uh, uh, were parted in uh, when I was about four years old. Mm -hmm. And actually, I've only seen him a couple of times since then. Really? But uh, my mother is... Had red, she, she passed away. She had red hair and very fair skin, and I turned out with dark hair and a very dark skin. Uh -huh. So for her not to really care about my father was hard to get over because I was a kind of a replica. You, you reminded right her of, of him, yeah. Sure. But um, uh, we, I grew up in Long Beach, California. I. My mother, though, wanted me to do lots of things. She had me playing the piano, which I did. I had a, a, a what do you call it? accordion. Uh, and then the thing that was closest to me and where I did the most was dancing. So oh. I, I started dancing when I was about mm -hmm. five years old. And I took dancing and did dance uh, at non-professional situations uh, f through the years uh, until I went back to New York uh, in the late uh, part of my teens. Mm -hmm. uh, so that I, I, I danced, I tap danced, I did all kinds of things except at one point I did some adagio and got dropped and that was the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, dancing was always very important to me, but also... Uh, school was very important to me, and I did very well in school mm -hmm. and uh, managed to get uh, scholarships to, as my fellow said at school, uh, wherever I wanted to go, which was uh, Great. very helpful yeah. uh, for us. And I went to Scripps College uh, in Claremont for my undergraduate work, uh, and there's where I got involved with journalism. Mm -hmm. I always been very eager to do a lot of things, and I was working on the paper at the Scripps College, uh, the Scripps College paper, and uh, one group came to me when I was a sophomore and said, because they, the editor was uh, voted on, so you had to be in an election to become editor of that newspaper, and they said, Ruth, would you uh, run for the paper's editorial, uh, to be the uh, paper's editor, 
not because we want you to be the editor, but because we want you to take away <laughs> votes from the one we don't like, and oh. we have one we like. Oh, I see. So we had this rigged uh, election, and uh, much to everybody's surprise, I won and became the editor of the Scripps paper, which say. started me mm. into journalism. You had no experience prior to that? Nothing in high school in journalism? In high school, I, I did a lot of, of speaking, public speaking. I see. I was on, and I was a good writer. I, I, mm. I did well in school. That's why I was able to get scholarships, they said, wherever I wanted to go, and I went to You're Scripps right. College. Uh -huh. um, and Scripps, of course, is a magnificent uh, uh, school for women and sure. uh, with a lot of places where the guys are as well around, so we yeah. had lots of wonderful times. Uh, and I uh, became the, pa the editor of the paper there, which got me started in journalism. And uh, I had a friend who had a car girlfriend who was there had a car but and you weren't supposed to have cars until you were a senior mm -hmm. however in order to use the car we figured out we had to get advertisements for the paper so we would get the advertisements in Los Angeles which meant we had to drive the car even when we were barely juniors mm -hmm. and but we got advertisements for the big uh, uh, stores in Los Angeles and made the paper a big paper also it became uh, we had a lot of back and forth in the paper and uh, really got the whole place up in arms many times by the stories we were doing and the editorials we were doing. And I mentioned this, all this because when it came time for me to figure out what I was going to do and what I was going to do after I graduated from Scripps, uh, the one professor particularly said, well, you know what you've got to do. You have shown that you're, you know, you're good at journalism. Why don't you just go to the best journalism school in the country mm -hmm. and become a journalist? And so that sounded like a good idea because when you graduate very often, and I think a lot of men and women know this, what am I going to do now? You know? Yeah, where do, where do we go from where here? Where do we go from here? So uh, I was told no. that the School of Journalism at Columbia uh, One of the best. was the mm. best mm. Uh, Pulitzer School. That and, I guess, uh, University of Missouri? Missouri is splendid. Both. My, mm -hmm, they're both very well known. Yeah. Of course, uh, being in New York has tremendous, uh, is tremendously fine because you have mm. such a great place to go out and report. Sure, sure. And also so many people. The thing that was so great in my case was that the professors, many of them only came just to be lecturers for they, a period of time. From the industry. From the industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted, I had always listened to the radio a lot, so one of the side things I did was radio writing. And uh, they had the United Press uh, uh, radio person, head of that radio section was one of our professors. And then... Paul White, who was called the father of radio news, sure, well, was White. was a professor. And on the first, uh, uh, I think we were supposed to write, he gave me an A and said, this is the first time I've ever given a first student an, an A. And then he proceeded to like what I did in the school and hired me while I was still going to Columbia. Oh. And I keep saying... And the rest is history because in a way, and, and I worked for CBS mm -hmm. here or in New York and then here in Los Angeles mm -hmm. all my life, and all my working life. And that working life came into a long time. Were you working at CBS while you were going to Columbia? Right. He, that was, uh, this was in graduate school, I assume. That graduate school. Yeah. I got my master's degree anyway. Uh -huh. uh, they, and I also had to do other, uh, uh, other classes. However... Uh, Bob Trout, I don't know if you remember oh, Bob sure. Trout. Absolutely. Bob Trout, a wonderful, wonderful reporter, com commentator, person, uh, was starting a new sh show, and Paul White wanted me to be a writer with him, hmm. with, with Bob Trout. And so while I still was going to school, I was going uh, to uh, 485 Madison Avenue <laughs> in New York, right. uh, where CBS is, and writing for Bob's uh, show. And then uh, Ed Murrow came and uh, <clears throat> put me in a documentary unit, uh, which and I did a major story on atomic science because I was blown away by the, the atomic bomb and the p 
period mm -hmm. of the fact that we were in the atomic age. Sure. That became a very important part of my life because uh, he led us, uh, Murrow said he, he chose four people to be in a documentary unit and he chose me as one of them. Two of us were young guys and two of them were uh, already directors at CBS. And he said, I want you to choose the story closest to your heart Take as much time as you need to report it and get it into a, a story, a show, and I will preempt the best show we have and put it on. Wow. Well, I was, as I say, blown away by the fact that we were in the atomic age and said I want to do something on atomic science. And the reason I'm making this long, because one of the things that has happened in my life uh, came then uh, when I said, and, and Murrow put no restrictions on us. We didn't have to do it in two weeks or four months or whatever. When we got it done, really? it was going to go on the air. Carte did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I said, I can, can't do this story on atomic science, atomic energy, without talking to Dr. Einstein and Albert, oh, wow. Einstein, Albert Einstein, who was at Princeton at that time. Uh. So but, and Murrow, okay, if you have to, but, but how are you going to do that? You know, that's not just something that you can, you okay. don't call up Dr. Einstein. No, I wouldn't think so. <laughs> so, but I wrote to Dr. Einstein, and he was in Princeton, I was in New York, and I wrote to him several times, and he didn't respond. Now, this is not at all unusual, or no, would, nobody so. else would expect that he would, but right. I was determined I could not do this program on atomic science if I didn't talk to Dr. Einstein. So I said, I'm going to Princeton. So I went down to Princeton. And to make it a little shorter, um, he wasn't in his office. <laughs> but it was where the, the uh, advanced studies uh, are, where he was working, mm -hmm. is, is out in the countryside. And it's a lovely countryside, and there was a hill beside it. And a, just an ordinary gentleman with his car had been the DAC taxi, and he took me out there. And then I said, he's not here. And he said, well, the old man lives up there on the hill. And I said, okay, let me out. And so I started up the hill. Walking. Walking. Yeah. And uh, in mm. fact, he, as I started, he said, and here comes the old man now. And here was Dr. Einstein coming down the hill. And I uh, walked up <laughs> the hill on the other side and went across. And uh, good morning. And he said, good morning. And it was a, a cold March morning. It was perfect. It was lovely out there and get, I said, good morning Dr. Einstein and then I walked over and said I'm Ruth Ashton <laughs> and he said oh the broadcasting lady <laughs> oh so he had, he knew about he, he had, had read the letters but yeah. he this was not something he did very much yeah. however um he was gracious and we walked together down the hill uh, to the his place uh, where he worked and um, stood out there for uh, well over 30, 40 minutes or maybe close to an hour mm -hmm. talking about uh, what was happening and uh, the fact that we were in an in atomic world now. How old were you at this point? I'm not, I never give, I, well, I was, I had just come out of school. So you were in your early 20s? Yes, well, I, yeah, I yeah. was just, uh, and, and he uh, was, he was at that point in his, what, 70s? 50s. 50s. Oh, he didn't grow, he didn't get real far. He didn't, I think he died when he was in his 60s at some point. I, I guess you're right, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, he, and, uh, but he, 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 he was wonderful. Uh, and, and dramatic, really, as you see, and I've talked, I've written about this, uh, the white hair flowing and the black, he had a black great coat on, and it was a, quite a figure to see, but also quite a, yeah, a fantastic person. You never would, it never leaves me as something that Im was important that happened in my life. Mm -hmm. He was very pessimistic because we were in the atomic age, uh -huh. uh, and uh, he God knows, no, no, knew the potentials uh, more than anybody. Sure. And he, he actually, he one of the things he was saying, uh, I was saying, well, I want to talk, you know, talk about the good side of, of that and the fact that the science of it brought to, out so much that could be done in science to, by scientists to change <clears throat> our world uh, mm -hmm. uh, on the good side, which is what my story finally was about. Uh, anyway. Uh, we, I, I parted with him, and I was able to say some of the things that he had said, but he didn't, I didn't ever 
get a chance to put him in front of a microphone, which mm -hmm. he would not. I didn't even ask. I I was I could use what he said, uh, which was uh, very philosophical, uh, and I did to some extent. Ultimately, and then I was able, I, I went around the country and talked to Dr. Oppenheimer and Dr. Seaborg and a lot of the uh, different uh, important scientists. I mentioned this one because it's the most profound thing, and it's, it's something that in uh, stories about me I haven't ever used. Mm -hmm. I am using it now because it was my beginning in terms of, but not just my beginning, it was my philosophy, my feeling about the world, and it had a lot to do with everything I did ever after that in terms of how I, who my, my real feelings were. Yes. And uh, anyway, um, ultimately that story was on the air called, uh, I can't even remember the darn name. It, I, I know somebody's, they, somebody said a story about that just this past year. Was it a half hour broadcast? Or? No, it was an hour. He's, an it, hour? Ed Murrow put it on, and he uh -huh. and he said, "I mean, and he, he they uh, took off the Lux Radio Theater and put it on." Hmm. Uh, the, at the moment, <laughs> there yeah. are too many things I'm remembering at one time, I but I'm going pretty far. Uh, hmm. the, the, uh, Charles Collingwood gave it a terrible the title: "The Sunny Side of the Atom" is what it was called. The sunny the side sun, of the atom. Because I, actually, ultimately, I did the. the the good side of what had come out of the science that brought out the atomic bomb. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the, the atomic science, which made it possible to look inside matter, not just use a microscope on the outside of people mm -hmm. or of material or anything, but the science from the uh, the work of breaking the atom and uh, of the general nuclear uh, science that has resulted afterwards. Mm -hmm. where you could go inside of matter uh, and with your instruments find it how it worked in terms of there was something wrong with your throat and they'd go inside uh, or they'd be able to uh, use the machine or the little gadgets to figure out where uh, I, iron was going and, and I, I, this is mm -hmm. very complicated and also I'm not in the <laughs> my mug of talking that that particular stuff. Anyway, I ultimately uh, I went. I I didn't like some of the things that I was that was ha that were happening in that particular area. So I went over to radio and worked with Doug Edwards in the early days of uh, mm -hmm. radio broadcasting uh, when it was just starting, basically. And I would get people to be on the air with him, like Mrs. No, excuse me, you, you said radio. You meant television. I mean television. Yeah, you know, television was starting. Okay, so yeah, yeah, Ed Murrow was, was radio. Yeah, well, Ed Murrow was radio, and yeah. he, but he was also vice president. He, that's true. And he became. That's why I was able to do all these things because yeah, he, he had a little power. He had a lot of power. Yeah. Anything he wanted to do, you got, you got to do. And you, you, you survived the cigarette smoke. <laughs> I didn't. I was not in rooms with him that much. Uh, I was out doing the things he let me do. You know, uh -huh. like go into uh, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, which I was the first reporter in there. Sure. Um, and things that happened because mm. he had a lot of power, and he he always moved. Uh, he didn't. He hated being a uh, vice president. He he wanted to be on the air. He wanted to be the reporter, mm -hmm. and, and it was he. he Put that away after very not too long. Yeah. Uh, but while he did it, he, he had these bigger ideas about what he should get out of the people he was, who were working under him. Mm -hmm. So that's what was caused me to have this great opportunity that I had. And, uh, he sounds and, like he was a terrific guy to work for because absolutely. he gave you all this carte blanche carte, to carte do blanche, what you wanted to do. and do the be he, he would choose, he chose only four of us, and, and he, I want you each to get the story closest to your heart mm -hmm. and uh, use as much time as you need to do a story about it. Wow. And, uh, and, and, that I, and I will, uh, as he said, and he did, he, he would... Uh, uh, choose the material or the time to put it on mm -hmm. uh, take off whatever was there and put sure. on what you did anyway but that was and then I went over though with Doug Edwards at uh, television and I worked on television over there on 57th street uh, yeah 50, uh -huh. across the street from uh, 485 Madison Avenue ah. yeah which was Radio and the big eight and the big CBS okay. station and then across the street 
uh, no, not on 57th. Th that no, was later on, I guess. Later, that was later yeah, on. Yeah. In fact, when, when television first started, the big television uh, studio and uh, play, uh, place, working place was in uh, the railroad station. <laughs> oh, Grand Central, Grand Central, <laughs> Grand Central Station. Grand huh? Central in the, uh, in the basement. Oh, I didn't know that. That's where we started. For heaven's sake. Yeah. Huh. And that's where Doug Edwards started doing uh, the mm. first show that was on television back there. Gosh, a lot of trains going by, I wouldn't think it would Well, be. <laughs> it, 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 as a matter of fact, they had worked there way down in the, way down in the bowels, you know, mm -hmm. for a long time. Anyway, um, but I worked for television. So you were, you write, wrote for him, for Doug Edwards? Um, I didn't really write for him. They called me, uh, they ha wanted me to get him uh, people to come in, uh, like Mrs. Uh, Roosevelt, and uh, you know, get people to come on to the air. Oh, I see. Uh, and I did that. And uh, I then, but there were public, uh, there were uh, a lot of different places we went. Uh, we covered s so many different things, and I would just be a reporter on some of these things, and then they'd write for him. Um, what did they call me? I had a, I had a title at that point. <laughs> mm -hmm. I forget it. You were out of Columbia at this point, or had well, you? Well, no, I, I graduated from Columbia, but I never got there for the graduation. My my <laughs> uh, my cap and gown were still. Uh, I had to go to work, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was a major day in the news. And I went to work, and the cap and gown were over on that chair where they stayed. <laughs> so sure. I graduated without being at the graduation ceremony. Mm. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, Trout was going to go, but it was a major day. There, was so, there were so many things happening that were major things at that particular yeah. time. And somehow uh, Paul White and uh, Ed Murrow and Bob Trout uh, thought I did good work. And Fair so much. I had a, a tremendous number of things that were I'm, I'm curious, uh, as a former college newspaper editor myself, and, and, and knowing the the intricacies of that job, uh, mm -hmm. you had to have a certain preparation for journalism to know how to do that. Did you have any kind of? Uh, you were a good writer, but, uh, but what about journalistic uh, principles? And, well, and, I didn't. I wasn't in. I didn't do journalism at Columbia. I was just doing. But, but in high school and in and, in, in, uh, in uh, undergraduate I, college, you didn't. No, as a matter of fact, I said it was a rigged election that got me even to be yeah, the editor. Yeah. But I was a very good writer. So you had no, but you had no formal. No, journalism so therefore I turned, I made it whatever I wanted it to be. Ah. And that was what turned out to be really good. Turned yeah. out beautifully for you. Well, I didn't have, I didn't go according to anything I had learned except the things that I knew. I was, as I say, I was a good writer. I was there. I <clears> cared <throat> about a lot of things. I was angry about things that were going on in on the campus. Yeah. And and we also needed to expand the paper because my friend had a car and <laughs> she couldn't drive it till she was a senior and and we were juniors when when I was editor. Uh, uh, we couldn't drive the car unless we had a good reason. Well, we had a good reason when we had to come into Los sure. Angeles to get uh, ads. Uh -huh. <laughs> so. But you had no formal who, what, when, where, and why training. No, no not right. not. And I of course, with a, a a school paper, it's not uh, that uh, you know regular. It's no. what, what you can what you do. You I have mean, a little more freedom to. Yeah, uh, and I was a good writer, as I say. Yeah. And if you wrote a good piece, just like I'm looking, I, valuable I, talent, good writing. If you're a good writer and you you write a story that uh, people like to read, uh, mm -hmm. you, you don't necessarily have to follow all of the different things. When, no. when you go into different other people's places where you're in their newspaper or their magazine or there's something, now you've got to have a, a style a comes style, into yeah. the style and the, uh, <clears throat> it be a little bit more uh, careful about what you write. Sure. But no, I, I had a, a great beginning in that. And then uh, the thing is that I didn't ever really work for newspapers. Uh -huh. I was always with CBS. Sure. Uh, so uh, broadcast uh, journalism became... Uh, born and raised, in, yeah. And it's a different world. Yep. Uh, color of uh, what you're writing has so much to do with it. Bob Trout was, and, and Bob just left us uh, just a few years ago. He yeah. lived to be mm -hmm. quite he was, old. Yes, and he, he did. He, uh, he, did you know him? 
I didn't know him, but I always admired his style and his, his delivery on the air. I thought it was well, a superb. He was a magnificent writer. Uh, mm-hmm. What he wrote, his his uh, work was, was uh, you know, and he said, and he knew how to say yeah. what he wrote. I think uh, he and and, and uh, Merle, uh, he and Lowell Thomas were two of my favorites growing mm-hmm. up. And, well, well uh, matter of fact, there are so many stories about Bob. Uh, one story when he was covering uh, Theodore, not Theodore Roosevelt, but Franklin Roosevelt, when he was went off to some place where uh, the president had gone in the yacht, and uh, uh, Trout was there to do all the stories as the president came off of his yacht and the things that were going to happen. Mm-hmm. But the yacht uh, moored and was sh- sitting there, and the president didn't come out. And Bob, and the story, and he, in those days, he'd come on because you're, you start and mm-hmm. you're going to be on when, when what happens, you know, happens. Mm-hmm. Sure. He, he's just gotten it all started. So he, Bob started his show and his story and was talking, and uh, the president and the yacht were sitting out there with the president, everything ready for him to come. And he didn't come for about an hour. And so Bob had ad lib for wow. the whole time. Yeah. And when the president came down the gangway, he said, Bob, I've been listening to you. I, I didn't want to come out because I was enjoying what you were saying. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> and and he, uh, Trout, just a, a wonderful Thank guy. You. So much fun. I mean, a humor that was just uh, mm. his very own. And, uh, and also his kindness and his work. We worked together very well. And I was brand new. So that... I owe him a great deal Sounds by like the it. fact that, but he liked the way I wrote, and the way I began to write when I was in radio was to hear the people I was writing for and write mm-hmm. with the style that they uh, had, mm-hmm. so that I changed, I didn't keep a particular style. However, yeah. one thing about the style on radio and television, too, uh, it's a lot of a br- small, short state, uh, right. sentences. right. Anyway, uh, he, working with people such as I worked with... It gave was, you a wonderful background. Gave me... Uh, it was, yeah, terrific les- lessons. Sure. sure. And then with... Uh, Better lessons than you would learn in journalism school. <laughs> and Murrow... Uh, and I did go to journalism school, yeah. so I got that. I graduated, as I told you. But uh, the cap and gown never got used. But... Um, uh, did you do any, any air work at this point? Were you on the air? <laughs> no. Not really. Not unless I accidentally would be on. Uh-huh. <laughs> the reason I say that is because there was uh, the head of uh, the Soviet Union who was coming over. It was the Soviet at that point. Uh, on a ship, and I went out because we were supposed to get his somebody to speak for him on this ship as he was coming into the uh, into New York, and we traced. I had a camera with me, and we found out where this fellow was. He was going to be a, I don't know what his title was going to be. But anyway, we found out where he was, and he came out of his stateroom, and we followed him, And he, but he wouldn't talk to us. And then he just, he was very nice, and he didn't speak mm-hmm. English. This is the, who was going to be the Soviet uh, uh, person on the United Nations. And, and we wanted him to say something. He wouldn't say anything. And we, we were walking around with a microphone, too, mm-hmm. uh, in those days, which is hard to do. But uh, there was also a, a, a setup for him on this uh, ship that he was coming in. We'd you know, gone out in a little ship, little boat. Anyway, um, that it was all fixed up for him to come and say something before we, uh, the, the boat got to, into the uh, it's wharf. Uh, but... He never would come. The, the Russian wouldn't ever come. Mm-hmm. And so you ask if I'd ever said anything on the air. So uh, there were a whole lot of uh, people around, uh, press people, and I simply just said, uh, Mr. All, what's his name, has to say is, yeah. <laughs> I uh-huh. said that. that was what I said on, yeah. until I came out here. That it was as uh-huh. far as I got on the air. Oh, my goodness. So what brought you out to the West Coast? I'm back, back born to and raised here. Yeah. And, in fact, one of the papers I wrote when I was at Columbia was I was born and raised in 
Southern California, and I hope to live, work, and die there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and White, and as a matter of fact, Paul White's off, uh, class, and he gave me, he, the first thing he gave me when he came to uh, the university was a piece of paper that says, tell Ruth Ashton that she has a job whenever she gets to Los Angeles. It was the news director at KNX. Mm. And uh, he said, but <laughs> I have ideas for you, says Paul White. Uh -huh. So how many years, uh, well, quite a long time before I got back out here. So how many years were you in New York? Oh, let's see. One, two, uh, four, five. Yeah, four, five. Four or five. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And um, and at school, you know, a good part of the time, yeah. and I got, I got, I had my diploma, which said I have my master's degree, master's degree in journalism, in journalism, Columbia but University. I wasn't anywhere near uh, where they handed these out. Mm -hmm. and, but as and I did the other things that I had to do to finish uh, uh, the class, sure. and, and I'm pretty mad at a lot of those people. But <laughs> 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 anyway. Um, then I came back out, and I simply went to work at KNX uh, uh, doing some things in public relations, not public relations, but public affairs um, in the news department. But I got married when I got out here, too. Which, uh -huh. and, and then the worst thing, it wasn't worse for me, it was the greatest, but uh, in terms of uh, having a job at that particular time, if you were going, if you were pregnant, that was it didn't work. <laughs> it, oh, yeah, that's they, right. you know, you, it, it is now, and it became not too long, I guess, afterwards, that you could uh, just you know take a leave or something uh, and come back again. But you couldn't; it was unheard of in those days. So you had to quit. Oh boy! So I quit, uh -huh. and I was out of uh, working. And being, I was, I wasn't not working. I was working really hard as a mother and and a wife. Mm -hmm. Then it was uh, about a year and a half after that, we got a phone call saying that they were going to start a news program on Channel Two over here at uh, uh, in on Vine Street, where you know thirteen thirteen North Vine. Uh, oh. CBS KNX was going to start a, a television news program. And I always said if they had to, uh, they needed something to, to uh, take the, mind, the minds away from the wrestling, which was a big thing. So they hired a woman doing news. <laughs> uh, that was certainly a big step forward. Well, it was. It was, uh, and I uh, uh, started there. <laughs> you just kind of kept on going. Uh, it, we, it worked. And, who, uh, who were your fellow newscasters at that Lee point? Lee Woods was the main person. Tom Harmon did sports. Mm -hmm. um, the father of the gal who talked about smog was on there. Um, but, it, but, but Tom Harmon and Lee Wood were the main people I remember. And because we would each, eat, they didn't, we didn't have film. Yeah. Anything. Uh, so we would each. We talk and we bring all of our uh, some, bring something to show. In my case, you know, I, I I can't even remember it without laughing because there were so many things that happened that were. Funny. You, you were doing women's of uh, type uh, well, stories. They, they, well, it was called the Woman's News Desk, and I said that means I'm a woman, so I can do anything I want to because it's a, it's woman a woman. Yeah. So anything I wanted to, so I I covered the waterfront uh, mm -hmm. did a lot of different things whatever I wanted to do I did and uh, everybody it wasn't like I was going out and be doing the hard stuff that other people were doing but sure. I was there were a lot of side things that I liked to do and I liked a lot of things that were fun and funny this and was a six o'clock newscast or ten o'clock ten o'clock at night mm -hmm. uh -huh. very good Th time 30 minutes yeah, thirty minute show, uh -huh. and there were as I say, Lee Wood did hard line, hard news. Uh, Tom Harmon did sports, sports. And, and, and in fact, Tom and I, one of the first things that had any vis vision to it was it was raining outside, and so the, I, the, somebody said, uh, "Why, Ruth? Why don't you and Tom come through the door with this umbrella?" 
because it was raining outside and we had to give a little touch to our program. Sure. So we did, and as we came through the door and the camera was on us, they threw a bucket of water on top of, oh, gosh. of the umbrella. Gee. Anyway, that's that's what happens in those days. Oh yeah, there was anything for, for a gag or visual. Yeah, and uh, and I did. Oh, I, I would bring mm. different visual things in, and yeah. it was a, an interesting time because um, everything that happened we did was new. Mm-hmm. So you had an audience that was seeing things for the first time. Absolutely, and, those, those, uh, those who had television receivers. Those who had television and the rest of them would too. go down and look in the windows of the, That's right. of the department and, stores. Uh, so what year would that have been, Ruth? We started, you? that was in 51. 1951. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And that was when it started. And uh, some of the women who have been in the women's movement have talked about how I was hired by CBS because they had to have a woman. In it. And later mm-hmm. there was something in, I don't know what, the, the, what who would they say called, meant them to have a woman? The uh, oh my my head is mm. too full here the, the, the federal guys who run us um, FCC FCC well yeah. yeah that and also the other crowd that they now get oh, who are they anyway all of those things were just happening they were all brand new I they, they didn't hire me because anybody there wanted women on <laughs> they didn't nobody even thought about it mm-hmm. uh, anyway but uh, they. The, the women's movement just put me down every yeah. time they possibly could. Oh, bad. Uh, How did they happen to call you back from your pregnancy? They, you'd had the child a year and yeah. a half before. Mm-hmm. So they no, just... I wasn't a year and a half. She wasn't that old. Uh, you know, I, it was, she was still very young when very we went young. to work. Yeah. So they just called up and said, oh, wait a minute, Ruth used to work for us. Let's bring her in. And Well, I had worked, I'd, I'd worked there and I'd done quite a lot with Merle and different people that they yeah. paid attention to oh, in New York. Mm-hmm. And also when I came out here, I did quite a few things uh, in uh, public affairs and so forth. Yeah. So that I was pretty n- known by all the people who were putting together the show. The so, show. Yeah. And uh, they knew I had had the, the different, uh, that, this, mm-hmm. that kind of uh, Good background. Trend. Yeah. So, so they, they took a chance. Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, but we had a lot of fun. It was, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> but then it also began to bring in some sponsors. Uh, all mm-hmm. of a sudden, Hills Brothers Coffee wanted to sponsor me. Really? And um, was it Hills Brothers? No, they had, no, they, it was not Hills Brothers to start with. What was it? Another, another big one that you know. Um, oh, Folgers? Was Folgers and, and, and Hills are both from San Francisco. But yeah. so this is from somebody far away. Ah. Uh, and they, they got this sponsor. But it's, it, it's a pre- prominent uh, mm. coffee crowd. Chock full of nuts? No, 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 <laughs> no, no. no. Well, big... Oh, come on, like St. Louis. Or, um, my head is, is gone. I've been remembering too many things. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, they... Hills was it Maxwell? Brothers. Maxwell House. Yeah, because Hills Brothers and uh, mm. the other one yeah. were up in San Francisco. That's right, Maxwell House. Maxwell House is who it was. And they had a big thing. They, they, they said they wanted to uh, sponsor me uh, mm. on radio. And um, and our people in sales were real pleased with that, and they were taking me over to uh, meet all these people, and they were going to sponsor me. What, what was it? I can't remember just all of this. I, at the moment, I can't. I can probably mm-hmm. t- 10 minutes after I'm through here. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fact was that I didn't, oh, I know, radio was, had given some, um, uh, had, had decided they wanted to have a woman doing news, because I was doing television, that was where it all yeah, started. Right. But now KNX decides they're going to have a woman doing news. Mm-hmm. So I, I was in, I went in the, the crowd who were trying to get the job, and I won. And I was doing, so then they had two women's things, but I was supposed to do both of them. Well, I couldn't do both of them, so I decided, because I had my little girl home, that I would rather do the day t- thing, which was for radio. Uh-huh. So just as they were selling me on television, mm-hmm. I was so naive. I didn't know any of these things. You shouldn't do this, you know. 
they're selling me on, and we're going over. I'm going over with a guy who subsequently became president of CBS. Anyway, Jim, Jim, what's his name? Anyway, uh, he's walking with me over to the Brown Derby where the people from Maxwell House are about ready to, uh, who want to talk to me and meet me, and they're having a little gathering mm -hmm. because they're going to be sponsoring me on television. But I had decided I had to work, in as much as I'd won that uh, gathering <clears throat> for doing tele radio, I said, I thought in myself and to people around me, I better just do radio because it's daytime, you know, mm -hmm. and then I can be a mom better if you still have to work. But so on the way over, Jim Aubrey, and it was, I was walking with him, and we're going over to see Maxwell House. They're going to sponsor me on television. And I say, Jim, I hate to tell you this, or I don't suppose I said it, I hate, because I didn't hate it at all. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking. I didn't know about business and so on. I said, Jim, I've decided I can't do the TV anymore at night, which is what Maxwell was going to sponsor. Yeah. And we're heading over there. They're having the big thing about it. Uh, I'm going to stay on radio uh, in the daytime. And I didn't have a sponsor for radio at that particular moment. And he stopped dead. It was a big account. Yeah. And he, he said, let me tell him. Mm. <laughs> anyway, so I stopped that. But subsequently, Hills Brothers Coffee came along and uh, sponsored me on radio. I mean, this gets really long. You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to talk to me that long. And I'll, I'll mm -hmm. shut up and you just ask me some questions that go from there to here. How long did how long did the uh, KNXT, was it still KNXT at that point? What was it to start with? And no, to start with, it was something else. It was something else and it turned to KNXT. Yeah. And uh, uh, 1313, how long were they there before uh, Columbia Square became their, the studios? Well, I was no longer there. I was on radio when uh, that was not all that long. Uh, mm -hmm. Columbia, uh, uh, well, what are you saying? Which Columbia Square became the studios? Yeah. Yeah. They, well, they, they, it was. They redid radio studios there. That's to, right. To accommodate television. Because I, I, when I went with radio, I stayed with radio quite a long time. So I was, um, and then they brought television over, uh, gee, I, I, I'm, I'm forgetting, I, I stayed with radio for a real long time because I, I was on 48 stations on mm. radio. Really? Yeah. Huh. And because we had the network out of, out of uh, Los Angeles for sure. a long time, CBS had the network. Uh, and then gradually uh, it got smaller and smaller as mm -hmm. TV became bigger and bigger right. and uh, there were a lot of uh, certainly economic reasons why things changed but I had when I was do, first doing my uh, show on radio I had uh, when Hills Brothers sponsored me I was at 48 49 stations and then uh, it, it started to go down, and I was sponsored by Folgers. That's why when you mentioned, and they're great. They, they hate each other, Hills and Folgers, and they're in San Francisco. But anyway, yeah. so Folgers sponsored me, but we now we're in 26 stations. <clears throat> and interesting, when I, when I was going to all these stations, 48, 9, uh, I was doing a five-minute show. Then when I was going to 26 stations, I was doing a 10-minute show. Well, then uh, the, these stations fell uh, apart because now the individual stations were coming in to doing more things for themselves and mm -hmm. not taking a network. And the network on the Pacific Network uh, just kind of gradually stopped yeah. uh, operating. Uh, and there were a few stations that would take it, though. Mm -hmm. And the news director or the station manager, somebody called me in and said, on, in terms of the television, it came down, I'm, I'm just trying to get keeping, I haven't gone back this on this state, what I'm talking mm -hmm. about for a long time. But, um, oh, this is still radio, yeah. I went, on, I went from five to, to 10, and then he calls me in to say that they only had this one sponsor that would go into the network and it was Xlax or one of those. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it was not one of those <laughs> things. 
Were, were you Ruth Ashton still, or Ruth? I was. I went Ruth Ashton for all, for all, all time. the time until I was married the second time. Then I picked up Taylor's uh, name, uh-huh. which is also a story. But we don't have time for all those stories. But no, I just was Ruth Ashton because uh, I had been Ruth Ashton with the with the company, mm-hmm. and I stayed with the company after I. After I've been, you know, after they let me go because I was having a baby, and then I, when right. I came back, they picked me up again. And uh, uh, so, Good. anyway, so radio changed, but they, so, when they call me in now, I go from this big bunch of people, a big bunch of stations, and then me, this is bunch mm. little stations. Now we don't have any stations that are going to pick up anything that comes out of Los Angeles. They're doing mm-hmm. their own stuff, mm-hmm. except there was one. A sponsor that would sponsor me, but we would, and they would take whatever stations they could get. Mm-hmm. It was excellent. Yeah, but uh, it's amazing. <laughs> and they played. Yeah. They had already produced a a, a, a a little, what do you call it, a thing, <laughs> little, little advertising a commercial, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm getting tired. Yeah. Um, We're uh, we got about fifteen minutes left. I want to bring you. You bring, asked me to just questions. Yeah, I want you, you to bring heard... bring us into television land again now huh? on KNXT. On KNXT, well, actually, I went for a while uh, out to. Uh, I had a lot of things happening in my personal life, mm. you know? and for a while, I was asked by my. I went to Scripps College as my undergraduate, as I t- mentioned. Yeah. And it's a group of colleges out there, mm-hmm. and things hadn't been so well with Exlax. Um, uh, with this other, we you know finally had nobody to sponsor, and um, this colleges wanted to do some special things in the Claremont colleges in, altogether. Mm-hmm. They had never had any kind of promotion or anything. Uh, as a group of five, or however many there are now, because they keep growing. Yeah. Um, and they asked me if I would come and uh, mm. do the central thing of the Claremont College is promoting them. Um, and things had changed for me. Yeah. Actually, I did a half-hour sh- show for KNX after all of the other things fell apart in terms of the network. Um, <clears throat> In the 30 minutes, uh, I got into a little problem with the station manager <laughs> one time because they kept trying to make me, and I did do some of these things, these p- promoting things. They, somebody would be starting a new store, and they would want me to go do a story, and this got to be too hard. I, t- I mean, I wouldn't, as a journalist, this just went the wrong way. Sure. And they've been treating me very well, uh, but I... I uh, got upset about that and and uh, the news director or the station manager uh, got upset too we got upset together so i yeah. i ended up not having a yeah, job well, there uh-huh. and so i did the, the uh, for a while i did uh, this, the uh, columbia not columbia, not columbia. Not you can see i'm getting tired um, the scripts, just more than scripts because it was scripts pomona yeah. and all those guys out Claremont there colleges. and i did uh, some Literature, and then we did a, a movie, which, and the thing that, and the movie, the person who did the narration on the movie that we did was Ronald Reagan. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And um, so I, I, I had a lot of things that mm. that happened when I was out there doing doing things. Yeah. Uh, and we did some 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 good work. Uh, what was the one I was going to tell you that was pretty interesting? Anyway. So how did how did the big news come to to come to uh, for become the newscast of preference here? Well, the the big news started. I I went into the onto the big news. Let's see. I, I stay. I went. I went back to radio, and I because Ralph Story had a big long thing all day long. And in fact, there were people who wanted me to Ralph and and, and me. And, wanted to, the two of us to get together and do some shows together. But I was gone, and he started Storyline, and a lot of the story, uh, they had this one great big yeah, storyline that went from 12.30 to 5 in the afternoon on radio. Things, I'm getting mixed up as to where we are, because we've gone a long way here. But I went, uh, after I finished 
with being with the colleges, and there's something very interesting about the colleges. There were 22 colleges in the uh, general area that are independent colleges, and the Scripps crowd or the uh, Claremont crowd is one batch of them. And it was this bunch, which I was part of, that started uh, the public radio here. Mm. We started that uh, station. Uh, and, And Rose... What was Rose's last name? She was the uh, public relations person for mm-hmm. uh, Caltech, and she became the first president on uh, Channel 28. Yeah. And so we had a lot to do with what happened uh, here in a different fashion. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Interesting. But I went <clears throat> back to radio one of the, and took over when Ralph wanted to go on a vacation. I took over on Storyline. And... Uh, it, it it was a great vacation. He said, yeah, we want you to fill in for Ralph while he's on vacation. Well, where is he going? He's going around the world on a ship. Oh, <laughs> so, my gosh. So I did that show for, for a long a time. Long time. <laughs> <laughs> Not just a normal vacation. <laughs> but that was uh, that. Wow. And then I went. Then, then there was another one. Oh, the guy who was very well known as a... Uh, uh, on the air, he, he, he's just gone off recently, and he did a night show, <clears throat> and uh, and they wanted to get rid of him over Channel Two. And in fact, he'd been dropped from KFWB. Then he came over to KNX, and KNX wanted to drop him. And then he forever was on the station he was on till recently. You know him in a minute. I just mm. I'm tired. <laughs> um, Anyway, I uh, for it all. Where am I now? I know I I, I was on. I did uh, the Ralph show, and then I did this night show. When they got rid of this guy that I can't remember his name, he was doing a night show that was from eight to eleven, mm-hmm. and they wanted me to do that. I I, I worked so hard at I these guess. shows for a while. Now, who's raising your daughter by this time? My mom, mom had, had come, and she was. I have two. Uh, and she, she was there, uh-huh. uh, and this two was children, two children, uh-huh. mm-hmm. both both girls, both girls. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And my mother was there quite a long time, and that okay. that went well. Yeah. But I was working my head off because my I also their dad was an alcoholic, and, mm. and I had to take over all the stuff very early, and that was part of what was driving me too, because I had to bring home yeah whatever we needed to sure. pay things. Yeah. So that was a very big part of the fact that I was not some nice little lady at home, and it would have been hard for me to sit still anyway because I don't do it well. Yeah. You know, um, anyway, uh, I worked, I did the storyline, and then this other guy, they kicked him out, but didn't he, they didn't want him to know he was not going to be on the air anymore, and he was doing the night show. They didn't want to tell him till Friday after the show, you know, a Friday after the show, and, and they wanted me to come on then on Monday. Mm-hmm. This is radio still. Uh, hey, come on on Monday because people knew me. And as a matter of fact, when I came on, it was it happened to be the day that they opened the uh, Los Angeles County Art Museum, mm. and there and there there was a lot of. Of controversy, a whole bunch of stuff. I had so much to do. Anyway, I started doing the night show. Eventually, this takes us to television, though, because I got so tired <laughs> with a lot of the stuff I was doing on radio. And you can't stop. I mean, there are no pictures that are going to get people's attention. You're going to have to keep on talking all the time, right. you know. Yeah. And I, the uh, eight to eleven uh, thing, and it really does mess up your life a lot. Sure. And I, um, at that time, they had the big news going, and uh, Grant Holcomb was over there, whom mm. I whom I knew, and he'd been talking to me along the way, and so at one point I call. <laughs> Hey, Grant, you still want me to come over? I want to rest. (laughs) So what do they do? They put me on for six days a week. Uh, Working nights. (laughs) Well, on radio. I mean, on television. On television, yeah. 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 No, I didn't know that. All the nights came, well, all these things are like that. What's his name? Was it... 
general, not general manager, but he was one of the top guys who wanted me to do a religious show. And I said, well, I'm doing, I'm doing all this stuff. This is on Channel 2. I'm doing all this. And he said, well, give it a try for, you know, one time. And I ended up doing that show for 13 years. Really? <laughs> Must have liked it. <laughs> well, it was good. I, uh, I, I, uh, you'd have a minister and a rabbi and a priest. Mm-hmm. Uh, you were the moderator? I was the moderator. And believe me, you could have a lot of fun with those. Yeah. <laughs> that, in all kinds of ways. I mean, sure. and uh, uh, but I, I it wasn't that I just wanted to do it that hot much. It was they needed somebody to do it in right. order for, to be the moderator. And I also did new, uh, uh, the, the news one too. So I've always worked pretty hard. Yeah, I guess you have. <laughs> Were you ever an on the street re- uh, reporter? You well, you did. I did. I did my own stories for the, my own shows. Mm-hmm. I was on the street all the time. All the time. Because I did my own shows, my own stories. Uh-huh. Nobody ever did stories for me when and, I was and, winning. And nobody had producers in those days. You were your own producer. I had producers. Did you? I had producers at different times. Uh, on radio, I'd have producers, which would help because they get, you know, they've got to make them where the uh, commercials are and all the kind yeah. of stuff that has to be done. But in television, you had a producer also in the early days? Uh, did, I didn't have a producer because let's see which which shows did I do when I had a uh, when I did my shows the religious shows and the, and, and the uh, talk shows and so forth I didn't have any producer who no. did anything except that maybe somebody who would help get the people who would be coming on right. things that would be uh, helping you sure uh, and I did newsmakers uh, for years and and when I went when I when I retired, that's when I went up to, uh, got a house up on a hill outside of Sacramento. Well, before that, I, I quit. It was all real fine. I got a, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and there were you know, some mm. nice things that happened to me. Uh-huh. I have a lot of pretty good, uh, nice things hanging around. Lifetime Achievement Award, I mean? Oh, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, I mean, I really, I'm very grateful for all, all those. The one that I, ever, and a lot of Emmy things that I, I, I treasure, you know, all these things I treasure because they meant something to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But um, after I went, after I had to quit, <laughs> I didn't quit, I retired. And, and then that's why I got up. Place. You, know, you went to Sacramento, did you say? Where? Well, I retired, Hills? and I had one thing, one of the stories that I had done a lot was I cover, covering Sacramento, Yeah. which I wish we were doing again. I mean, yeah. nobody's doing that now. They're, they're crazy up there, and we need yeah. somebody to point it out. That's right. <laughs> but uh, I did a lot of stories in, in Sacramento, and so when I moved to Sacramento, having retired, I mean, I retired with all of the things that you're supposed to do to retire. But mm-hmm. they kept calling me. The first thing they did was there was a pe- teacher strike down here, and um, they called me back. And I did the teacher strike because it went on for all summer long, and I knew all the people. Because mm-hmm. no, I was I was in the out on the street, uh, and then back in just talking, you know. Sure. No, I did them both. I because I'm, I'm I'm a basic reporter, uh-huh. <laughs> right. so that's what I am. But then that gets turned around in a lot of different fancy ways. Yeah. Uh, but I no, I've had some nice uh, things that have done. I'm, I'm, I'm being honored, as a matter of fact, coming up. Uh, United Press is, has a thing going on here in a couple of weeks. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, John Madden is being, uh, he, he's being given something, Vince Scully and I. Good. Yeah, it's a thing that's coming in a couple of weeks. Terrific. So you get lots of nice uh, rewards. Mm. And these one group of gr- women who are on the air now started a uh, scholarship in my name. So mm-hmm. the Ruth Ashton Taylor Scholarship is oh, now being used by a couple of young women, All right. which is very, very neat. You know, now, where did Taylor in, uh, come into the picture? Where did Jack Taylor? He was a ridiculous, mean, terrible <laughs> news. No, he, he was a cameraman. Oh, cameraman. Cameraman. Film cameraman. Film cameraman. Yeah. yeah, and I always say I had to pay him back, you know, when, uh, and so I married him. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get him. He was, uh, he's well known, and some of the people were talking, he's well known, he's been with uh, 
uh, the guys who started uh, so many of the things. Uh, it, he was he was been in New York. He was in uh, Texas. He, and then he was here. A, and he'd been around uh, with the, the motion pictures um, and was excellent uh, camera person. Mm-hmm. Well, we could finish on this one. Because, um, and he uh, thought of himself as really, you know, really the, the, the great macho man. And uh, one time we were, this is very early, the end of 68, 69, uh, there was a terrible fire out here. There have been a lot of terrible fires, but this one, uh, about 10 hotshot fire guys were killed. Uh, the fire mm. went back on them. And so the news, I was in the newsroom and it was nighttime. And they, Ruth, you got to go out to this fire. And uh, Jack would be the, the uh, cameraman. And so he, they say, okay, Jack, you're going to the fire. And uh, Ruth's your reporter. Ruth, my reporter, you know, it couldn't have been more macho. She just, you know, a woman going to this fire. I wasn't really dressed for a fire. I had high heels and a few other things, but you still, there's a fire and I got to cover it. And so, anyway, we go to the fire and he uh, says, I'm going to, it was dark out there. And and he said, okay, I'm going to turn the car around. It's on the way out. And if if anything happens, you're on your own. Okay, buddy. You know, <laughs> and so we go, and the chief, the chief, the county chief, is there even. So we're, because it's a really heavy duty fire, and, and uh, thing, terrible things have happened. And I, and I knew a lot of the fire guys. I'd covered a lot of fires, but this idiot cameraman didn't know that. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we did the story and came back, and it went on the network, as a matter of fact. And, uh, and he apologized eventually. As a matter of fact, I said I I paid back that sob. Hmm. I married him. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how come I have Taylor yeah. as my uh, hmm. last name. Yeah. And cool. then he became he, he we did a lot of really good stuff. Uh, uh-huh. We did he, he was a good uh, diver, and we did some underwater really? uh, stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got some good good pictures there. Great. And. Uh, but then the cameraman didn't like the fact that he could be my cameraman, you know, and he was getting a lot of good stuff, and that became a, a problem. So he he went freelance. It didn't work as well as. Uh, so again, I got a guy I can support. Oh boy! <laughs> no, uh, he and he, he got he had a very bad illness uh, that just grew and grew and grew. Uh, we divorced so before, and it, but then I. He, I had a place in Tahoe, and he eventually mm-hmm. stayed there in the last few years of his life. Uh-huh. Um, but he was uh, very well known, and he worked with Howard Hughes and a lot oh, of my people. Goodness. He was. Mm-hmm. He was Your he, daughters now, of course, are grown, and they've they're, they're in the profession at all. One of them is a producer, but she's with an advertising company. She hates it. As they, she's been through, but she's a bit of a producer. Uh-huh. The other one is an artist. She's very talented, uh, but she's had problems too. And I, I mentioned her father was an alcoholic. She's oh. had that problem, uh-huh. uh, but she uh, is now, and she's old, she's the older girl. And, and uh, the other, and they live in both of them live in Mill Valley, mm. and uh, Susan, the producer with the his big advertising agency, uh, works in San Francisco. I see. And uh, so yeah. I they're they're very close to me, and I <clears throat> and I've got to go home and see if Laurie, the one who is the older one, who is the paint, the artist, and she really does beautiful work. Uh-huh. And anyway, I sent her some money, and we're having trouble with that because she didn't get it last. I sent her something, yeah. $300 last, put in the mailbox on Monday. Mm-hmm. Last, on Saturday, she hadn't still gotten it, so, oh, so very that's become a, <laughs> that is our big thing of the day. Big thing, I guess. <laughs> anyway, well, I'm well, sorry I've been I've rattled on because no. once you start me, I'm like this thing that doesn't You've start. got so many stories to tell. It's a wonderful. We've been talking with Ruth Ashton Taylor, who's credited with being the first woman on television news in uh, in the west on the west coast at least and maybe even in the nation a remarkable uh, background from <laughs> new york uh, back to the place of her birth in los angeles and had a wonderful a wonderful career on channel 2 and knx radio uh, ruth been delightful talking to you
Thank you so much, and I'm sorry I just rattle on. You know, you, know, you start this one, it keeps going. It keeps, well, I'd much prefer that to somebody who gives yes and no answers. That's I don't for know, sure. what, what are those? What are those I know. But anyway, it's been a delightful talking to you. Thank you. Uh, Ruth Ashton Taylor on uh, June the 8th, 2009, for the Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters Archives. This is Jerry Fry from uh, the Audio Historian of Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters, and thanking you for listening. <laughs>